All right, everybody, it is time again for another Cinefix Roundtable. We got everybody in the same room to talk about all the things all at once. So, the first thing that we have to talk about, the most urgent, pressing, earth-shattering stuff to talk about, T? Expendable three, and I think by urgent, you mean let's just get this out of let's the way. Let's get it out of the way. <laughs> we can talk about other stuff. So I'm sure you guys all saw the trailer. It's been going around. Like there's a French version that actually came out slightly before the American one. I think my favorite thing was just uh, them going through the roll call at the beginning, where it was just like Cruise, Statham, and then it's just like grammar. Yeah. And I was just like, what? Yeah. And then like, it got and then it got even weirder. Bert, it was just Ernie. <laughs> yeah, I mean honestly the main thing that uh really just seals the deal for this movie was Gibson. And I was just like <laughs> Well, really, guys? The best yeah, thing like, was really? on the Gibson part of it, it's it's him with like a bazooka and a helicopter going <laughs> Which is, seems to be the attitude of the whole thing because even like Antonio like Banderas is Antonio Banderas is shot in the thing. He's like he's like what? Yeah. It's like I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's weird comic relief yeah. with Antonio Banderas. Or I Harrison, like a Ford. Harrison Ford though looks like he's having the time of his life, man. Yeah. He's flying his helicopter. It's, like the, it's like the it's animals from the Flintstones. We're like, mm, it's a living. <laughs> <laughs> I like this franchise. I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> we, all, we all grew up with these 80s and 90s action movies, and they're dinosaur movies, and they're silly now, but it's still like, it's funny because it's almost... Uh, uh, it's like these movies came out then. Like, they're still made yeah. with that same kind of, like, just earnest kind of madness. Yeah. And, and, it, and it doesn't make any sense, but, but it doesn't feel modern. And I kind of like that. It's a weird time capsule, like lost films. Except now everyone's, like, way older and shouldn't be doing action movies anymore. <laughs> well, yeah, thing... it's sort of like how, like, there are still Tupac albums coming, coming out. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is that for movies. I originally had a problem with The Expendables because, to me, it, it seemed like so much of a gimmick. It was like, if we throw every nostalgic action star at you, you'll like at least one of them enough to show up. <laughs> and it worked. I mean, so everybody worked. liked at least one of them enough to show up. <laughs> well, right? Like, I had friends who were like, Jet Li's in it. I haven't seen Jet Li in forever. I'm going to go see it. And it's like, he's probably in it for about 35 seconds, right? right? But, the, but they're a lot of fun. They're just a lot of fun. Well, here's, here's my, my only complaint about The Expendables. Well, there, there's no. It's not the only. You're one. only one. <laughs> it's not the only one. Um, I wish, like, I love that all those old action stars are still doing things and they're getting together and it's it's fun. Theoretically, on paper, it's a blast. But mm -hmm. I want them to get a shitty '80s action movie director to do it too. Mm -hmm. Like right. having yeah. Stallone do it was a mistake. Simon West doesn't count. And then this new guy, Patrick Hughes, I, I don't think. It's, well, I want like John McTiernan. To do it. <laughs> like, get John McTiernan out of prison. Is he out of jail? Yet? I think he's out of jail. He's, he's out of. He's there's no jail. reason. There's no reason why John McTiernan can't do it, going, especially because he's out of jail. I think they're or, slowly like reverse engineering it to where like the older guys are gonna fade out and like have a younger group sort of take the mantle. Do you think they have a plan for this? I, I, I do. <laughs> really? I mean, no, no, that's no, why no. they're bringing those new but techie they said, guys in. Who would be the uh, the young the young reboot crowd? Kellen Lutz, Zach Efron, <laughs> Emma uh, Watson, Emma Watson, <laughs> Harry Potter. Love it. Despite shitting on it, I will say maybe uh, under certain conditions, I will check the movie out. You know, It'll be like, on Netflix in two months. So I'll just <laughs> <do> it. <laughs> It'll be. A, it, <laughs> It'll be on Netflix 15 minutes after it hits. Yeah, theaters. yeah. I'm gonna go see. It. I'm gonna go see it in the theater. I'm gonna come home and it's gonna be in my Netflix. Theater. Fast and Furious Seven is adding both Statham and Tony Jaa. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm gonna watch a Fast and Furious movie any day before I watch an Expendables movie. Yeah. They are starting to run parallel. Though, they're, I, they're, they're, I mean, they're like a lineup of action stars doing action I things. I feel like you can you can watch but. a Fast movie, Fast and Furious movie, like unironically. Yeah. Like, Expendables, yeah. you have to be like, this is going to be bull****, I'm going to get wasted. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll all go see it anyway. Who are yeah. we kidding? What's next? Uh, let's talk about H. Oh, okay. Um, so Andy Serkis did an interview uh, with Collider that was really cool. It was short and sweet, but it was good. And he talks about how the first 20 minutes of Planet of the, of the next Planet of the Apes is just apes. Uh, and, they, and they released a, t a TV spot recently that's just apes, like riding horses and in this, like in the woods. And so it takes ten, it takes place ten years after the original 
and and apparent and he like watching how excited Andy Circus is made me the most. I was already excited for this movie, but that made me the most excited because he he's like I saw a rough cut and it's so good, <laughs> and uh, and he's like he's talking about how the movie deals with identity and cultures and how it really establishes the group of apes as a as like a tribe that you start identifying with and understanding before reintroducing the humans and then being like who the f are these f so he's starting his oscar push now so yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, and, and more and, power to him and uh he talks a lot about because he's he's moving into directing and he has this own like he has like his own weta uh where called the imaginarium where they do they do performance capture and they've been they've been studying all these ways to do performance capture on animals because they really want to crack how to like do an, how to do Animal Farm, which sounds amazing. But he's oh, directing, okay. he's gonna direct the Jungle Book as a as, as like a, a test of this of this yeah. performance capture because it's not right. motion capture anymore. Yeah, it's we've moved past capture. motion right. capture into performance. We've performed capture. past motion capture. I, I was really rooting for Andy Serkis to be nominated for something for the last. <laughs> Planet of the Apes movie because like you can tell it's Andy Serkis and like yes the it's it's largely visual effects and and you, he doesn't turn into an ape without them but like it, it's all based on that performance and you could argue that like if if the intricate motions of the actor's performance are coming through exactly um, then what's the difference between them CGIing a monkey on top of his face versus them putting Putting layers of makeup on it. Yeah, and you only have to look as, like, to see where it's going to be, you only have to look at video games, like The Last of Us, right? Right. Like, you just get so emotionally drawn in because of that performance capture. You you got these Mm -hmm. top-level actors doing performances, and it comes out in the game while you're playing, and it's just this whole other level of, like, connection to it. And seeing that in this new trailer for Planet of the Apes, it's like incredible to combine that top level CG with that top level performance capture. And you got to know it's working. If they if they yeah. spend literally the whole first act just with the, the apes, apes, you got to know it's working. Anytime I've seen a CGI human being, it goes real weird for me. Like that's what those old Zemeckis movies were all really about. We yeah. did talk about this earlier in Iron Man 3. Uh, some of Robert Downey Jr.'s close-up shots in the action scenes are a CG double. And, and they didn't. They didn't I, lead didn't on to it at all. Really? Yeah. Like, you, if you look at the ones, like I can't even tell. And and doing it with humans and doing it with apes, like they're real, and we know what real apes look like. And we know mm-hmm. what real people look like. So we have the frame of reference. Whereas, like you know, Benedict Cumberpatch performance capturing a dragon, like you can get right. away with some right. Shit, right. You know, the, the standards is so much higher for for this, and and just. To see how much they've gone all in on, like, yeah, the whole first act is going to be nothing but apes. Like, it's going to be amazing. It's got to be amazing. I've ever seen and it. I'm really yeah. excited about the Jungle Book. I think Andy Serkis directing is something I'm really excited about. I don't know what it'll be. Maybe he's a horrible director. Who knows? No. We'll find out. He did. He did the river scene in uh, in Desolation of Smog, which was like the coolest. Thing. It was the be- It was one of the best scenes. Best in there. part. Yeah. Speaking of fantastic creatures and where to find them, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Harry Potter is not going to be in a movie, but the Wizarding World the, in which. He he resides is going to be back on the screen. Uh, thank you, uh, Warner Brothers and J.K. Uh, that's no, no, good continue. sentence. That's a great, great. sentence. Uh, great. J.K. Rowling was convinced by the president of Warner Brothers to uh, write her first screenwriting uh, venture to write uh, based on the book within Harry Potter, Fantastic Creatures and Where to Find Them, uh, written by this guy Newt Scamander 70 years or so before Harry Potter was ever born, before it was a twinkle in James Potter's eye. Um, and <laughs> and uh, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a mega movie. What's Let's take mean? one book and make it three films, Mark. Uh, that's what they're doing these days. Is that a mega <laughs> franchise? A mega well, a mega now. franchise I would think is like the Avengers or Expendables, right? Jason Statham as a unicorn, <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger right. as a ginger fly. How how much more A list do you want than Newt Scamander? <laughs> <laughs> he wrote a textbook. He wrote damn a it. textbook. He wrote well, a textbook. A fictional textbook. Is, fictional is textbook. Voldemort gonna show up in this thing? I've I've no, only I don't seen think two. So. Of no, he's too. That's early. that's almost seventy years. He Apparently, it's it's partly like. Like Newt's adventures in research right. and finding yeah. all these magical, finding all these the magical, magical beasts. So, yeah, he's in New York so at is one this point. Gonna be like-
So is this going to be like the Dresden Files? I don't know what that is. Like, okay. it's a I know what okay. it is. Anybody. I know what it is. All right, yeah. yeah. I can talk Harry Potter with you all day long, but Dresden, Dresden Files. 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 It's in New York instead of Dresden. Right. Yeah. I, I think it would be cool. I actually I like actually have the Potter book. people from my, you have the textbook. I have the textbook. My sister, my sister got me a collection of Harry Potter textbooks for Christmas nice. a couple years ago. Because there's nothing more yeah. thrilling than reading a Well, for the game. guy who has everything. You know, <laughs> yeah. I think what's at least interesting about this venture is that it's the, it's the first time I've seen a spin-off be completely unrelated to the original, right? Like, Prometheus? No, but, Prome <laughs> but Prometheus is a prequel. Prometheus is yeah. supposed to fit... Na like yeah, this living, this like living this is world. living in the Currently, world, but it, but according to what she said so far, none of the events of this trilogy are going influence the, right. the uh, other yeah. storyline. So it's like the Ridley Richard. Scott right. universe. The young Voldemort. You got aliens. You got uh, Blade Runner, and uh, then in Blade a weird alien Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Alien take place in the same universe. Alien and Blade Runner take place in the same so universe. So Wayland Enterprises runs like so is like is, the driving force behind all of the. Is, okay, uh, so yeah, it is, is like that. Is Michael Fassbender in Prometheus a replicant? Yeah. You just blew my mind. He's like a, you, you like just blew is, my mind. I think he's what is considered like a Nexus Four. He's not like a perfect like Nexus Six, but he is. Really? In that is world, I don't think this is so, real now. Is this real? No, no this, is Pon Runner this is Pontiac. Alien take place in the yeah, exact same because, because universe. the corporation is the same. About but Fassbender's <laughs> character has nothing to do with the replicants from. It's not a replicant. No, he's an android. It's totally different. Internet, <laughs> answer us. <laughs> internet, answer. Yeah. tell us the tell truth. Us. No, tell is. me if I'm right or wrong. I completely <laughs> turned right. out. I've been thinking about pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the time. What were we talking about? We were talking about fantastical beasts and where to find them, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll find them in theaters. Yep. Yeah, here in a couple years. <laughs> really sorry about that, everybody. But it is time to move on. Speaking of segues. Speaking of segues. Hey, so Ridley Scott uh, is slated to do a Halo movie. This is a, not a uh, theatrical feature. This is a digital feature like uh, the other Halo movie that nobody watched. Um, so basically what this is, it's a 90-minute commercial for Microsoft for the Xbox One. Uh, which is kind of full circle for Ridley Scott, starting his career pretty much with uh, the Apple commercial. So right. he's jumping ship to the other boat. He's already talked about doing a new Blade Runner. We'll be on fire. And so he's going to just he's keep just gonna start killing over. franchise, starting his life over. He this shot Alien. He shot wow. Alien like eight years before that commercial. Wow. So yeah, and he shot Prometheus like uh, a little while before he was shooting this thing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the cycle of Ridley I'm Scott's not career. Time, yes. So all that to say, we've got we've got a ninety minute Halo movie coming right. out. They did compare it to, to the machine. Forward onto Don. No, but I I think forward onto Don like. They differentiated enough in stating that like Forward Onto Dawn was a digital series. Right. Then then they're having this they have the Steven Spielberg television show. Yeah. And then they have this, which is gonna be a, a, a movie, a feature. A movie, uh, it just may or may not be released in theaters. It may just be a, live, a, online. A, a live online. Yeah. yeah. Which I I mean the, the bigger thing for me is like, can we please just get a Halo thing made? Yeah. Like Other I mean, than Forward Onto Dawn, which was, yeah. I thought was really good. But yeah. I but thought it was really I, good. I'm talking like 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 I still am really upset that Neil Blomkamp and Peter Jackson didn't get to do yeah. it a couple right. of years ago. They built the right. goddamn warthogs and yeah. Yeah. and yeah. those commercials were amazing. Yeah. The Neil Blomkamp commercials, they were great. They were amazing. Like I want, I want, I want yeah, that. I want something big like that. I mean, you know, it's gonna be great. I mean, obviously Ridley Scott. You know, is who he is, and Spielberg is doing. You know, he's good at stuff. <laughs> so, so like, that, that hopefully, movies, right? gonna, yeah. <laughs> theoretically, we're gonna get some good Halo content somewhere if it's online. Well, yeah. and the Spielberg show is Blumkamp, as far as, right, as, as pilot, up till now. Yeah. The pilot, he's setting the tone of the show, right. which uh, could be really could cool. Be is really he good. actually confirmed as a director, or are they just rumored? I as think. A I think. I, I he was, and then he wasn't, and then he was again. I think he is again. Let's start the rumor that he definitely is. Right? Yeah, he yeah, definitely yeah. is. So do we get Ninja to play uh, Master Chief? Yeah, insert one cricket, person insert gets cricket sound here. <laughs> <laughs> one person in that camera. Did you say get a Ninja? The yeah. word. <laughs> Oh no, he's oh, putting right, them in a different right, movie right, entirely. Yeah, 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 the guy in Elysium. 
Uh, yeah, but yeah. now he's now he's in because uh, he's too with, hardcore. Yeah, and he's in the, the comedy that he's doing with Hugh Jackman. Yeah. And, uh, Neil Blomkamp's doing a comedy with Hugh Jackman and the guy from D. Antwerp. Chappie. It's called Chappie. Chappie. That's yeah. right. And it's about uh, an, an android, I think. Yes. After being kidnapped by two criminals during birth, Chappie becomes the adopted son in a strange and dysfunctional family. Great. That's so here's what we can confirm. <laughs> and he's a robot. Here's what it's, we can confirm. Chappie totally is not a Halo movie. No. It's I think we can Sigourney imagine. Weaver and Hugh Jackman being the parents of a robot. I look, I'm in for that. <laughs> Actually, what is <laughs> the <laughs> biggest question on this Halo movie is how do you convince what is Halo? Ridley Scott to do something short? Not four hours long. I'm down for a four-hour Halo movie. I don't even play yeah, Halo. That just seems like a no-brainer. I don't either. But like, why isn't that a movie? Like, there is a four-hour Halo uh, movie. A, it's called the cutscenes from Halo. Halo. I don't play Halo, but I like Gamers. it. I like the, the I I've liked some of the narrative stuff. Seems, yeah, yeah. yeah. I and mean, I'm asking as ignorantly, like, why isn't it a movie? I don't know. There's an well, entire the, book about it. The, yeah. Someone wrote a book about how the Halo movie didn't happen. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it was, it was yeah. twice. Be like, it didn't happen twice. It was going to be like. Microsoft, Fox, and Universal yeah. were all going to get together and do it. It was going to be like a $600 million budget or something ridiculous yeah. like that, and it just fell apart. Microsoft wanted too much control, too basically. Much. Like, yeah. scripts were delivered by people in Master Chief costumes. Right. Fully functional <laughs> yeah. Master Chief costumes. And, and that's, But that's ultimately why this is probably moving forward, because it's 100% in Microsoft's control. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which and if, if Microsoft has the ability to, to control it the way they want to control it, and that means we actually get some Halo content on some screen, large or small or otherwise, like great. And they can That's now release it themselves. If it's awesome, they it's can gonna, just release it on the Xbox, Xbox One. One. Yeah. And people yeah. will buy the Xbox One just to watch it. No. But from what I understand, Microsoft got money. So like why don't they just make a actual feature? Like why do they even need a studio? Don't they have enough money to just do it? It's partially about the the, distri- the like theatrical distribution yeah. system. Um, well, I don't want to go down that road yeah. right now. Yeah. But, but listen, the key word is vertical <laughs> integration. Yeah. Gotcha. So look, I think I think yeah. at best we got we got names like Ridley Scott and Spielberg and Neil Blomkamp potentially uh, attached to doing Halo content. So the best we can hope for is good Halo content, which I think I think they owe us. I think they owe us. Fingers crossed. All right, everybody, let us know what you think about all this stuff down in the comments below, and make sure to check out all the other great stuff we have on Cinefix. Click like and subscribe, and come back next time for more movie news on Cinefix Now. That's here. Yep, that's us. Here's the part where we talk and the music plays, we're just talking, and it's like, anyways, I can't believe that. That's great.